Witch's Tools, the magic and mythology of the besom. When you ask people to describe a witch, most will mention the hat, the cat, the cauldron, and of course the broomstick. Brooms, or rather besoms, have been associated with the witches in the popular imagination pretty much from time immemorial. The words broom, broomstick and besom seem to have all become more or less interchangeable, but technically a broom is a domestic tool with fibres bound together at the end of a long handle, usually in a rectangular or flattened form, while a besom is a domestic tool with a bundle of twigs tied to a shaft in a circular form. It is the besom with its circular form that is most associated with witches, past and present. So why is this? Well, I hate to get all old fashioned about gender roles, but that is at the crux of this. In times past, women were thought of as far more likely to be witches than men, although there have been and still are quite a few male witches out there. And the besom as a domestic tool was seen as a woman's tool. The home was seen as a woman's domain. I think this has become twisted and devalued over time, though. If you look at many of the old domestic goddesses, such as the regal Frigg, essentially the queen of the Norse gods, who was the goddess of all things domestic, she was no little housewife. She was the actual queen of her own domain. And many Norse women considered themselves the keepers of the keys of the home and very much in charge of the home and all domestic arrangements as if they too were queens of their own home. I mention Frigg because our earliest depiction of a woman riding what appears to be a broomstick is actually a Frigg riding a distaff which is a tool used for spinning. This wonderful 12th century image can still be seen today inside Schleswig Cathedral in Germany. The earliest depiction of a woman on an actual besom comes from slightly later from the 14th century French manuscript Le Champion de Dame, the Defender of Ladies. There is an idea that the besom as a magical tool evolved from the wand or distaff, and while a wand is very obviously a wand and could give the witch away to those who were less magically minded, a besom was always needed about the house and would arouse less suspicion. Sadly, over time, even the besom itself became suspicious to those out to get the witches. Brooms and besoms were quite often mentioned in the witch trials. Two accounts from the Salem witch trials talk of a supposedly invisible broom that was removed from the house of Sarah Good. Earlier, in 1324, in the case of Lady Alice Cotilla, it was said, In rifling the closet of the lady they found a pipe of ointment, wherewith she greased a staff, upon which she ambled and galloped through thick and thin. The witches of old were said to ride on their besoms to other places, to other realms or to mythical or even real places, such as the Swedish witches who rode out to Blacula, or the Blue Mountain on Maundy Thursday, or the German witches who rode out to the Brocken Mountain on Valpurgis Night. This is apparently because the besom is coated in special flying ointment made with natural hallucinogens that magically enabled the witch to fly, or at least believe she was flying, to visit other realms and places to develop her craft or commune with spirits. It was essentially a sh hallucinogenic shamanic trip. Today many witches still use their besom for spiritual journeying, either with or without the added flying ointment. The besom is one of those wonderfully practical tools. It can be used as much to sweep away fallen leaves or dust bunnies as it can to sweep away negative energies and sweep in positive new ones. Many witches like to keep a few besoms around the house. One for the housework, one for ritual use and a smaller one for cleaning up around their altar. Some will also keep an unused besom by their front door for protection. There's an interesting belief that a broom placed above the door or two brooms crossed over a door will prevent any kind of evil from entering the home. This is also reputed to prevent witches from entering, which obviously doesn't work as this is how many witches actually use their own besoms. A small besom placed under the pillow or hung from a bed knob keeps away nightmares. Besoms are also used for weather magic. Spinning a besom above your head just outside your front door is said to bring rain. Throwing a broom into the air brings wind. Some say that if a besom falls, it portends a thunderstorm. In China, one of their weather deities, Sao Ching Yang, is known as the Broom Lady and she sweeps in the clouds when rain is needed and sweeps them away when fine weather is the order of the day. Other goddesses linked with the besom include the aforementioned Frigg, the Slavic witch goddess Baba Yaga, who flies through the air in a mortar and pestle and was also said to have a magical broom, and the German Frau Holder, who is the goddess of children, witchcraft and all things domestic. She famously leads the wild hunt while riding her besom and rewards those who keep a clean house and punishes those who do not. Even halfway around the globe, the Aztecs had a besom riding goddess of witchcraft, sexuality and somewhat ironically filth, Talaza Tottle. Many witches sweep their own home or ritual space prior to undertaking magical work. With the act of sweeping with a besom, we can sweep away energies we don't want and sweep in those that we do want. Such sweeping is in and of itself a meditative and magical act that enables us to focus our intentions. So the besom is often used to sweep away bad habits, illness, stagnant or negative energies, to sweep negative people out of our lives, or to attempt to sweep, sweep a young adult out of the home when the parents think it's time for them to set up on their own. 
To sweep out, many witches will symbolically sweep counterclockwise and start at the back of the house, slowly working their way to the front so that the energies you're removing are symbolically swept out of the house. The besom is also used to bring in new energies, such as the new energies of the year or season, to sweep in luck, to bring in money, or to sweep in love if someone is seeking a new partner. To sweep in new energies, many witches will symbolically sleep clockwise and start just outside of the front of the house, working their way slowly to the back so the energies you're bringing in are symbolically swept into the house. It's claimed by some that the origin of riding the broomstick was a fertility ritual where women would ride, leap about and jump up and down with their besoms between their legs around the fields in the hope that the crops would grow as high as they could jump. In ritual and magical work, the besom is said to balance the masculine energies, after all it has a shaft, and feminine energies in the form of the bristles. In many cultures, jumping the broom or besom is a very important part of rituals of marriage or romantic joinings. Even today, many modern pagan hand fastings will see the couple jumping the groom to signify their coming together and setting up home. Due to the sexual and fertility connotations, jumping or stepping over the broom is also performed by women who want to get pregnant, or by those who are already pregnant, to ensure a swift and safe delivery. In ancient Welsh legend, Arianrod, the moon goddess, gives birth after stepping over a wand or besom. Mothers-to-be would also make a point of sweeping the house thoroughly prior to giving birth to make way for the spirit of the new child to enter. Conversely, touching a person with a besom with malevolent intent was supposed to render them infertile. Traditional besoms were made of very specific materials. The shaft was usually made of hazel or ash. The bristles were usually of birch twigs that were tied to the shaft with pliable willow twigs. In various shamanic cultures, the ash, birch and the willow represent the world tree, which connects this world to the other worlds, and so allowed the witch to travel between the different realms. That said, our ancestors were very practical people who mostly used what they had growing around them. Another popular material for the bristles was the twigs of a plant that even takes its common name from its use to make brooms the common broom plant, or Cetisus scoparius. For heath dwellers, heather was used to make their bristles. Common heather's scientific name, Coluna vulgaris, takes its coluna part from an old Greek word for sweeping. When not in use, a besom must always be placed bristles up. This is not only the lucky way to store it, the other one's unlucky, but practical too, as it helps protect the bristles so that they will last a lot longer. There are a lot of old superstitions and folklore about the besom. If the besom falls, company's coming. Never sweep on a Monday or after dark or you'll sweep your money away. Never buy a broom in the month of May, for if you do, you'll sweep your friends away. You should never take an old besom to a new house when you move. It will bring bad luck. Leave the old one behind and make or purchase a new one for new luck along with a new house. Never place a besom on a table. Never lend or borrow a besom. This is because a besom is said to absorb the energies of its owner or even to provide a home for spirits or familiars. Never sweep under a person's feet or you'll sweep away all their luck or even perhaps their life energy. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.